Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're gonna be talking about how do I create my own wireframes. So the one thing I really wanna stress is to keep things simple. You know, don't worry about fidelity, especially when you're wireframing. You just need just enough to really get people to understand what you're trying to convey. Pencil and paper is probably the best way to wireframe quickly, you know. This is one of my mantras, like we've already done this. I mean, we sketched a bit, we did some user flows and you've already kind of started wireframing. Even if you have a whiteboard, you can use one, but I mean, pencil and paper are huge. You know, if you do have a client, you can polish them up to showcase some of your interactions or more prominent areas within your flows. And you know, pages that you're designing for, you can definitely like add a little bit more fidelity to just showcase or demo them. But you wanna keep your colors to grayscale, white and black is perfectly fine, you know, grays in between. Don't go crazy on fonts, maybe two, well, you can even get away with one. You can easily show hierarchy with bolding fonts as well or increasing the size. Avoid any flashy images. You can use rectangles and squares and you know an X through the middle, just say that that would be an image. And for videos, you can add a triangle in the middle to indicate that that's one as well. So, you know, keep it simple. Don't worry about fidelity, especially at this stage. Next thing is you gotta ask yourself some pretty important questions. You know, what are the users and the business's goals when interacting with this page? How can the content be organized to support these goals? What should the user see when they first come to a page? What will the user expect to see on certain areas of the page? I think these questions are a perfect segue really into wireframing and, you know, consult your old artifacts right here. I have a story map and definitely go back to the story map if you have one to really consult like user stories and requirements so you can understand what will be on every page. We even did user flows as well. And we're gonna get into that right now. So consult your user flows and your sitemap. You know, as I consult my sitemap, I'm always looking at the key requirements and hierarchies for a certain page. I want to know like what is the most and least important thing that should be there. You know, different user stories, like they're really great because they're a better indicator of what exactly needs to be built from a user's perspective. And a proper, like if you have a story map, like I mentioned before, we would, you know, have user stories for every single instance throughout the product journey. And then we would come together to discuss which is like the riskiest part of the product we want to tackle first. So like for our client, we probably want to, you know, tackle search or the home page, or maybe the initial registration, all those different points where it really depends on users actually finding products or registering their interests. So that way the product can actually be successful. They're high traffic areas and the interactions are pretty integral to the user goal and we need to get them right to succeed. I always, and I mean always, tackle the riskiest features first. So like I mentioned before, like that's a perfect segue into this because everyone has a different definition of what risky is and it can mean a lot of different things. It could be features that dictate the success of the product. It could be certain assumptions that your team and client have for a certain feature. When I'm in a kickoff meeting or I'm talking to clients, I really kind of, I have a list of risky assumptions that we have as well. And I mark all those things down. Anything from what we assume the user wants or assume will be a good feature or certain things like risks. There are high traffic areas that really depend on nailing the interaction in order to succeed for the business. For our client, if we release a search that just doesn't work, or the interaction is way too complex, the product essentially will fail. So there's a lot of things like that that we need to account for and we should probably be focusing a lot of our attention on like in comparison to another feature like profile or a wish list. So always keep that in mind. Another big thing is to bring your team into the process. I mean, this is huge. You should often be talking to every member of your team. It doesn't matter, product managers for business goals, developers for like development strategy. You can even talk to like quality assurance people, like quality analyst people to talk about and just how certain things work within the product and what their expectations are. Other disciplines will provide priceless insight into the ways you can build those wireframes. So make sure that you include others in your process. It may be a business goal that you aren't meeting or a technical challenge that you may have like for certain interactions you want to come to life. So tap into your peers. Example of, you know, trying to do things that are way too hard to develop. So if you have like a wireframe that is just way too complex, you should definitely be talking to your developers. 
I often take a look at Dribble. I mean, you know, I mention Dribble a lot because it's a great place to get inspiration and all that, but the majority of the designs showcased there will probably never be built and have never been built because they just are way too complex and time consuming. I'm not saying that it is impossible because everything is possible with enough time and money, but most times you want to build your way up to something that is like considered perfect. And we may release in different stages, whether that be like a minimum viable product that has only the features that you truly need to validate if your product has any, you know, legs. Or sometimes we may be releasing on top of that the next best features. And over time, we'll get to a point where we can really hone in on the design and polish different things. But generally, you want to release in kind of waves instead of building out a product from zero to 100. You want to get like 25% of the way there, build another set of features, improve on other features based off of what you've learned from your wireframe testing and even just basic prototype testing. So remember, loop your team in. It's really going to help you understand what you can and cannot build. It'll also really help you understand what kind of like different business goals you may have that you haven't considered. Maybe stakeholders have certain goals. So these are the tips I often give other designers for when we want to actually use wireframes and when we actually want to create our own. So follow these tips and you'll be well on your way to making some awesome wireframes that are based off of facts and different types of data and are used to actually validate everyone's assumptions.